So hi everyone, I hope you're looking forward to today's session with the Dharma chanting, some meditations and the Dharma talk. Continuing our commentary on the Metta Sutta. So let's uh, start the chanting straight away with a clear mind, no attachment. Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Udham saranam gachami, tamam saranam gachami, sangham saranam gachami, tudayam bi budham saranam gachami, tudayam bi dhammam saranam gachami. Tudayam bi sangham saranam gachami. Tadayam bi budham saranam gachami. Tadayam bi dhammam saranam gachami. Tadayam bi sangham saranam gachami. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dharmaya, Namo Sanghaya. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dharmaya, Namo Sanghaya. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dharmaya, Namo Sanghaya. I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. Through the positive potential I create by practicing the six parameters. May I soon attain enlightenment in order to benefit all sentient beings. I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. Through the positive potential I create by practicing the six parameters. May I soon attain enlightenment in order to benefit all sentient beings. I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. Through the positive potential I create by practicing the six parameters. May I soon attain enlightenment in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and its causes. May they be free from suffering and its causes. May they never be parted from their happiness beyond suffering. And may they abide in equanimity free of bias, attachment to the near and aversion from the far. I shall cause this. Great compassionate Buddha, please inspire me to be able to do so. Reverently, I prostrate with my body, speech and mind and present clouds of every types of offerings, actual and mentally transformed. I confess all of my negative actions accumulated since beginningless time and rejoice in all the virtues of all holy and ordinary beings. Please remain until cyclic existence ends and turn the wheel of Dharma for all sentient beings. I dedicate the virtues of myself and others to the great enlightenment. However innumerable all sentient beings are about to save them all. However inexhaustible my delusions are about to extinguish them all. However immeasurable the Dharma teachings are about to master them all. However endless the Buddha's way is about to follow it completely. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Nayata Hungate Gate Paragate Parasungate Bodhisu. Tayata ungate gate paragate parasungate bodhisoma. Tayata ungate gate paragate parasungate bodhisoma. 
So I thought I'd just start today by just letting you know, if you decide to do those two mantras, I just, I just leave it at those two at the moment because you're familiar with those. Um, you can do them many ways. Like if you recite them over and over to focus your mind, to calm your mind, also to purify the negative karma, to develop more compassion, the first one, to develop, to develop more wisdom, the second one, put together to unify this compassion and wisdom. You can do that in many ways. You can sing it. You can do it slowly. You can do it really fast. You can do it uh, monotonically in a sense, or maybe tritonically, something like that. Um, and like, for instance, all money per me home, you can do like we do, or you can do like I do inside my mind when I'm walking. I do the meditations uh, while I'm doing this activity. Unless, of course, I'm walking uh, with someone and they want to have a chat. But uh, then I can't be rude, can I? But uh, or you can do it like this. And then you can even do it on the in-breath if you're not walking, of course. Otherwise, too hard. Um, or you can do... Which is um, the way that I do it as part of my be kind to yourself song. And it's very close, like I said, to the traditional way that a lot of people do it. Then also the Tibetans uh, do it very fast. And when I do my um, uh, practices, um, Vajrayana practice related to Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva, and I'm chanting this along with the longer mantra as well, but uh, this one I do very fast. So you can do like that as well. It's up to yourself. Some people think fast is better, um, but actually, no, there's nothing better. Whatever suits you and whatever makes you um, be able to focus your mind, to concentrate your mind, and then focus on the practice. If you're utilizing visualization, for instance, to focus on the visualization mentally, and then, of course, with your speech and your body, you're doing the, um, the mantra. Then, of course, sometimes there's mudras, mudras involved as well. So maybe the hand gesture, even if it's just that hand gesture um, or the hand gesture like this meditation, you know. Um, so you can do that. Gate, gate, para, gate, para, sam, gate, bodhisattva. Of course, we start with payata om, which basically means pay attention. Yeah, have an upright mind. And then, of course, the mantra. So you can actually, if you're reciting over and over, um, this mantra, you can drop the Tayata Om if you like, and um, you can do like this. Like that. Uh, when I do these mantras, when I'm walking in my mind doing them, I actually do them in time with my steps. And it's quite easy. It's could very. It's beautiful, actually. It's really nice to do this. So let's say I'm taking steps like this. Or you could even have a beat or two in between them if you if you want. If you don't, don't want to do it with the in breath as well. Um, and then of course um, you can do it as I do in the song that I wrote in relation to this. And um, I'm trying to think. Um, Gati Gati Para Gati Para Sam Gati Bodhi Soha. 
and repeat it over and over like that. So there's many ways you can do that. I just thought I, I just had that idea before we started today's class to encourage you to utilize these mantras in the Sanskrit language, as well as other, other prayers as well. You can do them in, you can work out your own melody, melodies if you like, or you can listen to what other people do, you know, on the internet, for instance, or what I do in my recordings. And you, you can utilize that. Um, you can be quite creative with these things, as long as you're not doing it to show off, as long as you're not doing it as a performance as such, even if you're performing to yourself, because what that'll do is it'll take your mind off the actual practice. Again, we want to decrease the ego, eventually to eradicate the ego, not increase the ego and reinforce it over and over. Okay, so uh, once again, I repeat, now forget everything I said. You can go back to the video later, or maybe you've taken the mental note that you can go back to later, or physical notes that you can go back to later. And now we will focus on the meditation practices. The initial one is to release the tension from the body. So now get yourself in a good position to do this. Gently close your eyes, lips gently touching, your mouth nice and relaxed with your tongue resting on the upper palate above your top teeth in your mouth. Once again, I'll remind you that if you find it difficult to release the tension just with your mind, you can utilize the breath. So you take a long in breath in and, or, or a deep breath in breath in and then have a long breath out and you can release the tension with the out breath. Also, you can manipulate the body if you like. Either stretch it or move it around a little bit those areas that you have the tension in. But once we get to the breath meditation, especially because it's such a short meditation that we do in this class, try to keep your body still during the breath meditation, as well as the loving kindness meditation. So now release the tension from your body, from the bottom of the body from the feet all the way to the shoulders, and then down to the ends of your hands, fingers, then back up to the top of your head. Now you can scan your body again, just to see if there's any leftover tension that you may be able to release. And now bring your mind to your breath. Place your mind on the feeling of the breath as you breathe in your nose, past your throat and chest area, all the way into your lungs, and then back out the same way it came in and back out your nose again. Breathing in and breathing out. Don't try too hard and try too little. Practice the middle part. If thoughts arise or any sort of mental activity arises, don't cling to it. Don't grasp at it. Also, don't try to forcefully push it away or deny it. Instead, let it go naturally by replacing your mind back onto your breath. Some sessions you may not have to do this so much, but other sessions you may have to do it more, depending on how active your mind is at any given time. And that's fine. Don't expect to go from the bottom of the mountain to the top of the mountain in one go. It takes time to get to the top of the mountain from the bottom of the mountain. You have to make some effort. You also, ha also have to have some rest, one step at a time, one breath at a time. If your mind starts to become dull, then wake it up a little bit by focusing more brightly on your breath. 
This is the process of the breath meditation. Trust in yourself to be able to practice like this and over time improve the concentration. Trust in the method. Such a simple method. Don't think that it doesn't lead to wonderful results. Helps us on the path to enlightenment. So now let's practice like this for a few minutes in silence. So now you can feel pleased with yourself for engaging in the practice and fill yourself with a universal love and kindness. <clears throat> with this feeling of friendship and harmlessness, goodwill, love and kindness, compassion, acceptance, forgiveness, honesty. You can utilize the feeling, this loving kind, loving and kind feeling or you can also utilize a visualization or visualizing yourself, your whole being filling with white light or white nectar. Feel yourself with so much love and kindness now that it overflows and radiates outwards initially to your loved ones, family or friends.
and also to strangers. And to those people that you may find difficult, may even regard as enemies as well. May all of these people have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they be peaceful. Now gradually, let's radiate this love and kindness out further and further, distance-wise now. Firstly, to include all of the living beings around your immediate area. All of the different types of living beings. Ones that live on the land, fly through the air, live in the waters. And gradually further and further distance wise, let's radiate this love and kindness out throughout our whole state or county. And other states and counties throughout our whole country. and other countries throughout the whole world. Initially, those that you're familiar with and have an affinity towards, and or then also those that you are indifferent towards, and then those that you may have some negative feelings towards, until your loving kindness pervades throughout the whole planet, not only just in the countries, but throughout the oceans, under the oceans, under the countries, above, below, and in all directions. I radiate beyond this world alone, throughout the whole solar system. And the whole galaxy. And the whole universe. Have your loving kindness pervade now throughout infinite space, without limit, in all directions. Whilst also being present here and now to recite the dedication prayer. Due to this merit, may I soon attain the enlightened state of the Buddha, so that I may be able to liberate all sentient beings from their suffering. May the precious body, Chita, not yet born, arise and grow. May that born have no decline, but increase forevermore. And may the precious view of Shunyata, not yet born, arise and grow. May that born have no decline, but increase forevermore. So I hope you're full of loving kindness now. And that you have in your mind that all living beings are filled with your loving kindness. They are not separate from you. Just before I start the commentary, I'll just let you know, um, sometimes, you know, with the, the social media, we have some issues. Um, and I just wanted to share with you that for some reason, Facebook has stopped me sharing my posts to groups. Started yesterday. I don't know how long they're going to continue this. I have, um, uh, what do you call it, a post-it or something or other? Well, I can't remember the words they used. So I don't agree or something. And anyway, so still today, they, they couldn't um, share the group. So some of you that may view my teachings um, and also the other posts I put from other teachers and the Buddha, as well as these videos and other videos, um, some of you may view them in the groups. So just go to my page to view it for the time being. And um, hopefully, just keep an eye out. Hopefully, it won't last too long. And um, somebody said to me, uh, Benito actually in Thailand who views the videos every week and um, speaks or writes to me, I shouldn't say speaks to me, but writes to me through Messenger for a few years now and um, regards me as his uh, teacher. Um, he said to me a while ago when I, when I was actually blocked from putting any posts at all, probably about two years ago or something, he said, you're in purgatory, Facebook purgatory. So I don't know how the algorithms or whether it's people complaining or whatever it is, it's, um, 
kind of silly stuff, but I, I think it's, I don't think there's some person there pressing a button saying you can't do that anymore for some reason. I think maybe if you do too much or something, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. So anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. No complaints though, uh, because uh, even though I'm not like the big flowing river, like someone like Dalai Lama or other great teachers, my masters, um, not like these great teachers, maybe I'm just like a flowing stream, but I will find a way around the blockages. <laughs> Always don't worry about that and um, continue to share the Dharma even with some limited uh, limitations on occasions. Okay, so in fact, limitations all the time, but even bigger ones sometimes. So I hope you enjoyed that example. Yeah, that's maybe you can use it for your own practice, you know, like a flowing river or a flowing stream um, eventually finds its way around, over, or even through over time, the things that block its path. So those obscurations, those obstacles that get in the way of our path, eventually, you know, if you can find an easy way around them, do that. If you can go over them, do that, like increase your effort. Um, but sometimes it may be a little slower, like wearing down a rock, for instance. It may take a long time to wear, for the water to wear down a rock. But even as the Buddha said, even if the drip of water, slowly dripping little bit by little bit on a rock, eventually will wear the rock away. So that's the same with our Dharma practice. I just thought I'd share that with you. Okay. Once again, method to the madness when I say something. So anyway, um, we haven't, because I spoke about the, um, the mantras at the beginning, uh, we haven't got as long as I was hoping for, but that's okay. I did write myself some notes today. But first of all, I'll reiterate that we've already gone through the first verse out of four in the, the universal love song universal love and kindness or metta sutra song um, and the first one to remind you was predominantly based on morality second and third ones were predominantly based on mental absorption or meditation and this one that we're starting today is predominantly based on insight or wisdom now of course we don't have the prajnaparamita yet the perfection of wisdom yet we don't have the absolute wisdom yet, you could say. But we can work our way with, you could say, relative levels of wisdom. Okay, so I guess the word wisdom or insight today, and uh, what I'll use in this commentary, relates mainly to this relative. Wherever we're at right now, and the wisdom that we have right now, working our way to improving this wisdom. I'm going to use, I'll use the example of a camera. Now, I've used this example um, in the past for other, other teachings as well. If your camera, for instance, is focused just on you know, close up, that's all you see is what you're focused on. That's the same with your mind. If your mind is focused on, for instance, just yourself, you know, and your own problems, for instance, then it doesn't see the problems of others. It doesn't, um, it, it, you kind of isolate it. And then this is like the whole universe, the whole of your being are these problems. Um, or yourself, you know, um, but um, if you widen the focus of the camera, then all that around you starts to come into focus, you can focus on this, your mind becomes wider, so your problems are not as big, even if they're still there, obviously you can, if you can fix them, you can work on fixing them, you know, overcoming them, if, if not, then maybe relieve them a little bit, things like that, but um, with an open mind, you get to perceive things on a more open level or a more vast level, be able to have more insight into the nature of all things, not just this like on your mind, okay? For instance, the example I was just alluding to then, if we do have some uh, issues, you know, some pain in the neck or, you know, something like that, then um, maybe you can widen your mind, widen your camera, then you can perceive many people, in fact, probably even most people have this pain in the neck. And so then you can alleviate it a little bit. Um, but also at the same time, because other people have these problems too, this allows you the opportunity to develop more love and kindness and more compassion, taking your mind off, reinforcing the ego. And um, I'm not saying it's going to give, help you to give up 
It'll help you relieve the pain, at least the tension around the pain, which makes it worse, but uh, actually um, helps you to develop this compassion, this love and kindness, these conditions that will eventually lead you to, to having the conditions so you can prepare your mind to understand the nature of reality or the emptiness of all phenomena, the prajnaparamita, the perfection of wisdom. Okay, so right now it's more of a relative wisdom or knowledge or insight that we are talking about. So the notes that I wrote just before the class, actually, just leading up to it, um, they're really out of order because it's on a, it's on a piece of paper that um, I run out of room. So I've given you the example of the camera. Um, now I would like to talk, first of all, um, this wisdom aspect of this part of the path, if you think about it, is based on the Four Noble Truths, okay? The Noble Truth of Unsatisfactoriness, often translated as suffering, Dukkha. The Noble Truth of the Cause of Dukkha, the Cause of Suffering or Unsatisfactoriness. These two together are the law of karma, aren't they? Cause and then the effect. So the cause is the ignorance that gives rise to attachment or attachment that arises from ignorance. Then, of course, with this attachment, it becomes dualistic attachment and aversion and so on and so forth. Then, of course, with this cause, we will experience the effect of samsara, continually traveling in samsara, which is impermanent, unsatisfactory, or has the nature of suffering, and there's no self to be found anywhere. Then, of course, the third noble truth. This is the result of the practice of the Dharma path. It's called Niroda, the truth of cessation. Also, we can call it Nirvana or Nibbana or liberation or enlightenment. This is when we have totally cut the roots or uprooted, you could say, the roots of ignorance. So cut away the attachment, cut away the aversion down to the roots and totally eradicate it, even the propensity for them to arise again. So this is the third, this is the result of the path. This is obviously comes down to Prajnaparamita. This is perfection of wisdom. You realize this. How to do it? The four noble truths. Sorry, how to do it? The eightfold path. <clears throat> the fourth of the noble truths. Okay, so it's important that we go back again to the Four Noble Truths. The very first discourse or formal discourse that the Buddha gave was the Dharma Chaka Pavatana Sutta. The putting in motion the wheel of Dharma or turning the wheel of Dharma discourse. So it started out with that, but then of course everything else can go back to this. You can, in all aspects of the Dharma, includes the Four Noble Truths. Okay, when you're talking about the law of karma, you're talking about the Four Noble Truths. When you're talking about the emptiness of the cause, the emptiness of the effect and breaking through this cycle, you're talking about Four Noble Truths, the third one in particular. How to do it, fourth one. Okay, so it's always, we're always talking about this. Um, never forget that. Never forget this is the beginning of the path. You could say this is actually the, the foundation, as well as the path itself, as well as the result of the path itself. So there's three aspects. Foundation, the path, and then result. So I wanted to point that out first of all. Um, I mentioned already, of course, the, this is, covers the right view, doesn't it? Right view and right intention can also be known as right understanding and right thoughts with right thoughts or intentions being the direct antidote to uproot, overcome attachment and aversion. And right understanding or right view is a direct antidote to uprooting the ignorance with wisdom. Okay, so in other words, these two together are the direct antidotes to uproot the three poisons of ignorance, attachment and aversion. So this verse, the fourth verse, it, it goes like this, standing, walking, sitting or lying down, 
during all one's waking hours, may one remain mindful of this uh, heart, this way of living that is the best in the world, unattached to speculations, views and sense desires. With clear vision, such a person will never be reborn in the cycles of suffering. So obviously, we're going to go in order and we're going to dissect almost word by word, standing, walking, sitting or lying down. These are known as the four postures. All of our postures, our physical postures, fit into these four. How wonderful. It's like all of the time, infinite time, fits into the three times, doesn't it? Past, present, and future. So whether we're standing, whether we're, in other words, staying still and upright, whether that's not really being active, maybe you are standing on the beach, standing in the park, in your garden, not really doing anything, or whether you're standing waiting for a bus, standing waiting in the supermarket to pay for your items <laughs> actually think about those ones i think so often it gets when you do that you get irritated it's not very um helpful on the dharma path when, when that happens and so um whether you're walking in other words moving any movement like that could be running could be jogging you know it could be on a bicycle so standing walking whether you're sitting down, cross-legged on the floor, on a chair, on a couch, reclining, in other words, lying down as well. When During all of these four postures, whatever posture you're in, may you remain mindful, aware of this heart, this heart of loving kindness. You could also add compassion, this bodhicitta intention. Remain mindful of this heart and this way of living. In other words, this heart inside you and also radiating it outwards throughout the world, above, below, and in all directions. That is the best in the world. Love and kindness is the antidote, again, for anger and hatred. If you add compassion to that, also cruelty, prejudice, all of these things. So maintain a heart like this and radiate it outwards. Initially from your mind, then through your actions and your words. So I actually didn't get anywhere into my notes from before. But we'll continue onwards next week and possibly the week after as well. And I hope you find this interesting. I'm going to talk next week about what I was going to talk about this week, actually, was talking about the wise, how the wise are and how the unwise are. First of all, very few wise. The wise are few. The unwise are many throughout this world, unfortunately. So let us live in a wise way. Be loving and kind, compassionate, generous, be patient, moral, have enthusiasm, make great effort in the right direction to improve our concentration, improve our wisdom and compassion and so forth. I rejoice in your goodness and I'll see you next week.